broadcast through a television set and some teenage partygoers are seized by an apparition or a mere sectarian squabble among a band of dreamy-eyed anarchists. You figure you out as we take you with us tonight on a journey into the reptile mind. <laughs> It's fine, Professor. Indeed, the work is going well. We've established communications with the Polish groups, and we're presenting this new organizational form of theirs to the American communications industry, trade and labor groups this evening. I trust that we can finally begin to open the first fissures in political alliances of trade and labor groups in this country. We can begin to build economic microstructures on an anarchist model. American labor groups are greatly impressed with the Polish struggle. With it, we have our first powerful example of political alliances that we've been striving to change through years of work. No, Professor, the work is going well. I'm almost afraid to say, but I'm deliriously hopeful for the first time in my entire political career. But what's bothering me, Professor, is this recurring flax pains in the side of my brain. You must remember, we spoke a bit before. Yes, yes, yes. No, I don't think you understand, Professor. You don't understand this. Wait, let me explain. It's not the sharp pain anymore that we were speaking of before, but rather this flat, heavy pressure inside of my brain. And it somehow has become connected with a farcical sort of comic strip dream that I've been having for the past two weeks. I've become enraged with them. I focus in on the one who seems to be the instigator of this madness. Are we getting mad? Carol, this is your fault. You've never taken our work seriously. Now you persuaded the others to follow you in the nightclubs and saloons, to squander their energies on useless amusement, to partake in frivolous chatter and become toys of their sexual urges and lust. That's ridiculous. I work for the party as much as you have. You just don't even feel like you're alive if you're not at the library or not in a meeting hall giving some damn speech about some bullshit. We're going to another kind of party. Let's get ready. Come on, we'll have a swell time. Hey, Rico, you ought to come I know what's going on. Get rid of this crummy leather coat, these funky 
lucky wingtip shoes. I'm going to get a cab. Are you coming? Oh, you're crazy. I have important work to do. Oh, Reba, oh you're that's such a ridiculous. No, I don't understand. Wait a minute. I have it. This oh, is very important. Oh, you're ignoring your responsibility. What's that bullshit on TV? What is it? it was as if we'd become the raging inverse of ourselves, images of those whose mentalities we had so long despised. We had been transformed into the slaves of machinations and actions that were destroying the world. These terrible lizards were handling things now, transforming great stretches into destroying machines, into vicious reptilian things, and in some way I felt that we were joining them. We were all shaken from the ferocious reptile attack. I, more than the others, mauled as I was by the monster's claw. I found strangely little comfort in Joe's arms. I felt that we'd lost that part of us that had made us a team, and had been deeply shaken by the last attack. And we'd, we'd try to bandage her wounds, but our will to resist had been sapped. <laughs> we huddled exhausted and hungry in the burnt out cave. Tempers flared. Joe, come on, fix that fire already. It's getting cold in here. Hey, relax. And why don't you go out and get us some food instead of bitching at me, Carol? There's dinosaurs out there. It was then that the horrible transformations began to occur. Oh. I'm afraid you're all going to have to leave now. This is my place, and you're all going to have to leave. Go away. Go. Anna, you got to be kidding. You this have to leave place. now. I want to be by myself, and I don't want you here. What are you doing? You have to see that. I see the Anna. Anna. There's dinosaurs out there. I'm sorry, but this place is as much ours as it is yours. Anna, Joel's right. There's monsters outside. And besides, this is all our place now. I'm sorry. As You're going I to have to leave. Like Anna said, maybe she was right. We should have thrown you to the dinosaurs. 
something drove me to confess at that very moment. You're right, Joe! This is my game, this little escapade with the monsters. And all of you, you're floundering in your goodwill. You haven't the least idea of what's going on or what there is to be done. And you're right, too, Joe. I am in control. They're coming in. Are you leaving? You can't We're leave getting me. The hell out of here. You can't leave me. I'm oh, leaving too. Friends. No, I'm no, leaving don't too. leave me. The monsters, they'll get me. They'll get me. Ah, they'll get me. Don't leave. Don't leave. Ah. Ah. No, professor. <laughs> Sometimes I hear these creatures speaking to me in my dreams. <laughs> Propounding principles for us to live by and revealing the strange principles of their civilizations. Where's my mind? Any of these strange communications? Well, there's one I do remember, Professor. I, one alien told me the principle of their star drive engines. It seems they move their ships by hitching a ride on patterns of turbulence in interstellar space. The turbulence is directly related to the density of matter, which in interstellar space is exceedingly thin. Mm. Apparently, the courses or twists of a system in turbulence are constant in time, such that one turbulence of X amount of matter takes Y amount of time. That is constant, irrespective of the spatial distribution of the matter. Hmm. The movement of smoke disrupted by the currents of air, like dye in the water. Yes. The theory you have outlined to me is absolute nonsense. But nonetheless, still, this turbulence is something that is being explored within the scientific community. Well, we're over the wetlands and lakes. They're absorbing patterns of turbulence. Matthew, the next one we're going back to after this is, is uh... It may sound like a lot of malarkey to you, <laughs> Professor, but that's what I've been going through lately. We're like so many children tossed into the yard to play. History, a weary recitation of ground gained and lost, had gripped us in its iron claw. Like phantoms in a dream, unaware of the forces that drive us on, we retrace our paths of our ancestors. The luminous dreams, the tantalizing promises of freedom, dissolve into the limits of our domains, defining the boundaries of our constricted souls, forgetting how to speak to one another, how to tell each other what we see that could be. We turn away into the long night of our lives without the words for the pains we have come to feel.